Hello, welcome to JLo Artist YouTube channel. Today we'll be doing some drawing with graphite. So get out your pencils, your cotton swab, kneaded eraser, anything that you think you need to draw with. Have it right handy. And let's draw together. Remember, art makes life better. So thanks for being here today, by the way, and thanks for drawing with me. Hopefully you'll enjoy this and learn something from it. We're going to start out with our number two pencil, or this HB pencil. And just to remind you, on the end of your pencil is a number. Uh, this one says 6B, and this one is a number two, or HB pencil. The HB is right in the middle of the hardness scale, or softness scale, however you want to say it. The higher the number in the B scale, the softer the lead. Therefore, the more rubs off onto your paper and the darker it gets. Okay, so your 6B is going to be your dark pencil. Your HB is going to be much lighter. On an H scale, if you get like a 4H, it's going to be very hard. And you get very little graphite rubbing off on there. As we're drawing, we first want to establish where everything goes. So we're going to use simple shapes. The one thing that you, you want to do is right up at the top, you want to put this uh, like a little edge or a little line and say, I want, that's the top of his head. I want his head to go up in there somewhere. And his little haunches as it comes down, you can say, well, if this is his body, this, this shape right here, this is how big you want him to be. If that's how big you want him to be, and his haunch, that little hind leg that kind of sticks out, it's going to go over here somewhere. That would leave a paw over here and another paw like right here with his, his face kind of coming out this way. You establish how big you want it. This should be, you shouldn't have to draw anything smaller than your open hand. I mean, if you put your hand on that piece of paper, that, that lion should be bigger than your hand. Then once you've established your size, then you kind of look at it and go, okay, if that's how big it is, his head is almost half the size of that space that I've got there. So if you go about halfway and go, okay, there's his chin. And somewhere above his chin is that little jowls. He's got a nose up in there somewhere. Or you can even come up and go, his head's going to be right there. You know, that's how big his head goes. You want to just start establishing all those things. Now, of course, we're going to adjust this, but you need a point of reference before you can really establish anything. So there's, there's my point of reference. That's how big I want to make it. Then you start comparing. Now, we're doing graphic enlargement, and with graphic enlargement, you're dividing up your picture into little spaces. After a while, you do that naturally. You do that through your mind. And so this, this way of proportioning is much faster than trying to do a graph. But the graph is going to be more accurate, especially when you're beginning. So as you begin, you're going to do the graph, but then all of a sudden you're going to go, oh, I don't need the graph anymore. And you're going to proportion it this way. So you've got your size established. Now what you want to do is just go in and kind of adjust. And you can do this with the side of your pencil. Uh, remember, those of you who had me in Art 1, you draw with the side of your pencil. And there's three reasons why we do this. Number one, this is faster. You can draw much faster this way. Your elbow and your shoulder draw better circles than your wrist does. And so you don't do a whole lot of wrist movement here. It's, it's all arm. It also keeps your hand up off the, the paper so you don't smear it as easily. So, it, so number one, it's fast. Number two, it's on the surface. You're not grinding it into the surface. Everything that we've drawn on here so far gets erased easily. And so it, it stays superficial. We can move it around. We can blend it. We can do all sorts of things. And thirdly, this makes a better line anyway. It's just, it's just all around better. So I know it's kind of weird, but if you, if you draw this way, you're just going to draw faster and better. 
So then what I do is I'll go in and I'll kind of look at some of the shadowy areas, the darker areas, and I'll throw those in like that. And I can I can even go over the whole body and just throw in some some very superficial values in this. Those, those dark shapes are going to help you to see your proportions better as well. His ear is about right up in there, and I can throw that in even a bit more. Sometimes you add a little bit of pressure to it, and you can get a little darker value. So come down in there. There's a little shadow under his mouth, his chin. Not worried about where the eye goes yet. We're not worried about a lot of those little details that a lot of people get too concerned about right from the start. You just gotta kind of relax and take it a little, a little slower, a little easier. There's his nose, just this little kind of triangular shape comes down. If you start looking at some of your other lines because you've adjusted and you don't like them, just take your kneaded eraser and just wipe those out. They're so superficial that that'll just come right out. And your kneaded eraser, again, it absorbs the graphite, and therefore you're not left with all those little bits of erasers around. So here I am just adjusting. I don't want to, to do huge lines around everything. I'm just going to allow the edges to kind of take care of themselves. I'm ready to put that eye in. If I come down about even with the bottom of his ear. So if I look at that and I think, okay, that ear's in about the right place. And I can come straight over from about the bottom of the ear and say, okay, that's about where that eye goes. And instead of drawing the eye, I'm just going to draw the shadows, like just around the top of the, the eye. There's a dark area there towards the middle of the nose as it comes down. I'm going to use my kneaded eraser to just clean up some areas. Just some little spots that maybe I don't feel are quite right. And because everything is superficial, it's on the surface, it's going to clean up real easy. A lot of these other lines, we're going to put in graphite anyway, so uh, I'm not going to worry about those yet. If I need to erase them, I can. I go down the, here's his paws. And as you draw it, you can adjust. You can say, well, this was too small or too big or whatever. Adjust it until it looks about right. So I don't know if you notice how much I'm adjusting, but that really, I, you know, my initial drawing isn't perfect. You have to adjust. You just keep going. Everything here can be erased. Notice also at the bottom where he's laying in the grass and there's all this grass coming up in there. I'm not concerned about that edge because it'll come. There's a shadow down in there and, and I'm not worried about it. Now I'm going to kind of look at some of those darker areas and see if I can throw some of those in. A 
And again, I might have to adjust a little bit until it looks about right. Here's some dark hair coming off his mane. It's all very soft. Some of that hair we'll, we'll do with our cotton swab, so it's not a big deal if it's not quite right. His eye's a little low, so now I've got to adjust it up. Now, with everything with the side of your pencil, so easy to get rid of if you need to. Easy to change. You're not stuck with anything. If you had drawn a line around something, you'd be stuck with it. Because it's like, I can't get rid of that line. Can you see your line kind of starting to come together? And just, just keep drawing and adjusting as you go. Don't worry about details. That Those details will come later. And even all that fuzzy stuff from his his mane, that's all going to come later. Don't don't worry too much about the hair. I'm going to go in, I'm going to clean up anything with my kneaded eraser. Anything that I need to change or alter or clean up here, easily done. So now what I'm going to do is when I get it to that point and I think, okay, it's I, it's just about right, I'm going to take my cotton swab and I'm going to start blending things just to soften them. This way, anything I layer on top of it is going to stay smooth. And a, a lot of people say, well, how do you get things so smooth? This is it. This is my secret. It's not really a secret. But you just take your cotton swab and you just start blending it. And you'll pick up graphite on your cotton swab that will be useful later on. And as you start blending it like this, it also helps you to see your proportions and your values. I can even throw in some of those wrinkles that he's got back there. Just a few, if you need to. Because we definitely have to come back in and get some stronger contrast here. This will become a guide to you, too. So when you start doing some darker values and things, this will help to guide you along the way. Now, if you think, oh, Mr. Lowe, you're doing details already. I'm not. I'm just blending it, and then I'll see a little bit of a, of a dark spot or a little, 
a little wrinkle or something, and I'll just drag my cotton swab over there, and it'll look like details, but I'm really not doing details. Just blocking it in still. But it looks like details. So now you have kind of a, a ghost image of what you want. It's, it's this right size. Look at it, make sure proportions are right. You can adjust it from here. Anything you need to do. Because before we start adding the, va the details to it, the details are made by contrast. So darker darks. Before we start doing that, you really want to adjust it. So I can see things I need to adjust. So I'm going to just take a minute here and adjust some of this. Need to bring some of that down. Now, what's the most important place on our whole piece that we're doing here? The face? Is that what everybody will start looking at? Yeah. So that's the thing. We want to spend a little extra time in the face. Make it good, and then everything else will fall into place. So I'm just going to take my kneaded eraser now. I'm going to pull out any areas that I may have absentmindedly gone into with my, my blending tool. And now I'm going to abandon my HP pencil in favor of that really dark pencil. And I can also flip up to doing this. All the big spots done, all my, my compositions done. Uh, he is kind of floating, but we'll take care of the ground later on. Whenever you do a portrait like this or a picture like this, you can kind of wait till the end to do the ground. But it needs to be done. So we, we won't forget about it. So I'm going to come in with my pencil like this, and I'm going to just start the darkest areas. His eye is very, very important. So I'm going to start in with the eye. And in Art 1, when we drew with ink, I told you, you'll never, you'll never draw the same again after you've drawn with ink. Because there's so much that you can leave out. So now we're going to use that same kind of concept and say, well, there's lots of edges that we don't need in there. Like this light edge back in here. We could pretty much leave that out. Or some of this light edge up in his head down here. We can leave a lot of that out. So when you're drawing the darkest areas, just draw the darkest areas and leave anything else that isn't dark out. You can always blend it, too. Just look at the shapes of the shadows. And try to draw those shapes in. You kind of got to trust yourself a little bit, too. Sometimes we overthink this. So I'm just trying to get in the darkest areas. And if it's a, a little area that you think, well, I don't I don't see the edge. Don't draw it in. Like right here down his nose, uh, just leave it out. I mean, we've got a little bit there, but we don't want a hard line there. Let the edges take care of themselves. Remember that feathered line, too? 
where you kind of drop your pencil in and give it a little flick. We're going to use that with uh, with this this hair coming out. This is a feathered line. You just kind of drop it in, give it a little fleck. You lighten up as it comes out. And it'll make your points nice and thin, just like hair. And also remember that we're going to be using our cotton swab. So a lot of that real soft stuff uh, that's up in there, you, you may not even want to draw it in favor of using your cotton swab a little bit later. Anything that's dark, just put it in first. Then everything else will come later. Eyes are important to me, so I always make sure that I got got the eyes kind of doing what they need to do. This is that feathered line, and as you go along, and you just kind of do little flex. Here and there we're going to be blending this later on and so you want it to look fuzzy you want it to look kind of hairy so just kind of whenever there's a little crease or a little bit of hair kind of sticking out there it's just this little flecky line and you can kind of choose how much of that you do If you want your pencil to kind of stay on the surface, switch over to this where you're drawing on the side of your pencil, and it'll stay on the surface. That's easier to blend. So if you're going to smear it, this is the way to put that stuff in there so it'll smear it much easier. I don't know if you've ever drawn a lion before, but uh, this this technique is really great for all the soft, fuzzy areas. And plus, I don't get a hard edge this way. When you're doing fuzzy creatures, hard edges are not desirable. Because now when I come into it with my cotton swab and I start blending those, then that edge becomes very soft. And you can start drying with that cotton swab, too. So like some of those little areas of soft, fuzzy areas that you see the, the value changes, but it's really soft. You can do that with your cotton swab. And if you blend into it too much, this is where that kneaded eraser is really cool. You can come into it and go, oh, you know what? I needed some more light in there. You can just pinch it down to a little point. You just touch it. Voila. You get that light back into it. And you can put as much detail in there as you want to between the pencil and the eraser. I'm just drawing with this cotton swab now. Any of the really light edges, you dry in there, smear some things.
And like I say, you can always come back into it with your kneaded eraser or your other pencil too. You, you can come back into it with your pencil and darken in some areas or that's going to be so much quicker to do it that way. Some of these really light areas, I'm going to put those in with my cotton swab. This is all done just by blending it. It's crazy, and it's fast. Now I put I, I need to go back into it with my kneaded eraser and just pull out a few things. You can just touch things and it, it'll pull it right out, create those little values. After a while, that kneaded eraser gets kind of dark. So you just pull it apart like this put it back together, and then you got a fresh surface. Some little hairs are coming out away from him there. You can actually, if you've got a little bit of blend in there, you just pull that out with your kneaded eraser and it gives it that illusion that it's kind of soft and fuzzy. That's just done with your kneaded eraser. But that is the technique. And there is so much you can do with it. Kind of have to practice that feathered line. Most people have kind of a little hard time with it. Once you get it practiced, then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, that works. Sometimes you may want to just put in some graphite and leave it. If it's really dark, I'm going to have to just leave that because that's pretty dark right there. Rather than draw a line around that edge, I'm just going to tighten it up with my kneaded eraser. That's really all you need. Sometimes if you've got that little shine in the eye, that little shine is really going to make that eye look more alive. I often have to go back into it and touch it with my kneaded eraser just to make it a little brighter. Because the face is the most important thing, that's the thing people look at, you really putting some added effort into that. And then the rest of it can go much quicker. You can fudge on a lot of that other parts of the body. Fudge meaning that you 
you leave it a little looser. But people like a real tight face. Because that's what they're looking at. They understand that the paws and the, you know, the mane is kind of fuzzy and soft. They know it's there. But the face it needs a little extra time. Once you got that, you know that the rest of it's just going to be good anyway. But now that I've got the face done, I'm going to just use the side of my pencil and just kind of, uh, for lack of a better way to say it, scribble in my details. You're also going to pick up a whole lot more graphite when you start blending it. And that will help you to draw with that too. Now all that I'm going to blend. I know it looks kind of silly right now, but when you start blending it, it's going to look so much better. You got to kind of trust that part of it. There's also some weeds and things that kind of come up into him. Uh, you can leave those out a little bit. Like if I think, oh, here's a here's a blade of grass or something. That's coming up in there. I can stroke that with my kneaded eraser and then can kind of leave it out. So as I go around it, I can say, well, okay, here's that little blade of grass. I just leave it out. That bottom edge is kind of going to be bumpy anyway because of the grass and stuff that he's sitting on. Now I'm just going to go in and blend with my cotton swab. Pull some of that stuff out. And then as you're going like for the, the, the main here, you can pull that out. And look how fuzzy that looks up in there. And it's soft. The last thing we'll do is go back in with our kneaded eraser, pull out a few little highlights, and you got it. He's a cake. And you can take this as far as you want it to go. Some people really like tight, tight details. And others kind of like this kind of soft, sketchy kind of look to it. It's kind of up to you.
So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just come back into my uh, main with the eraser there so you can see what I'm going to do here. And uh, I'm just going to pull some of this out. Just going to pinch it down. You can get two or three strokes out of one pinch and then you have to redo it. But that way you don't have to draw each individual hair. That's crazy. You just want to do just a couple of them. Just enough that your viewer knows what that is. Then the last, you could just throw in just a couple little lines with your pencil just to help out those edges a little bit of the hair, but really you don't, don't need a lot. And here I'm just picking up the graphite that's there at the bottom, I'm kind of moving it up into it. Here's those little wrinkles in the back. You just kind of blend them, leave a little bit out. And if, if you take too much or if you put too much in there, you can always take your kneaded eraser and touch them. Or you could put in more graphite. Not a problem. When you're drawing people, hands and faces are often the most important place of the whole piece. And I think sometimes with animals, the paws are kind of the same way. They're as important as the, as the face. Maybe not quite, but secondary at least. Look how easy this is to do all that soft, fuzzy stuff with your cotton swab. All that stuff in the, in the front was just done with the cotton swab. I'm just going to take my pencil now. And just scribble in the dark. I'm not worried about the paws really. I'm just worried about the lights and darks. So if you get those in, then your object, whatever it is, will come through. Don't need to draw a line around things. Just let them go. They'll come through. They'll figure it out. So with that, we uh, just blend it. I needed eraser is going to be important here too because I've got 
tons of little little spots that I need to take out. Where you feel like you're drawing as much with your needed eraser as you are with your pencil. So now we have a floating lion. We've got to figure out how to keep him from floating. So he just needs a little shadow. Here's a little shadow down in here. You can add some grass. Here's some more. We'll just blend that and it'll be done. You don't want your lion to be floating. Not good to have a floating lion. You just scribble in some little dark areas. You blend them up, little kneaded eraser here and there, and you got it. And that's really, you don't need anything in the background. You don't need anything up to the front, really. Just enough. And as, as an artist, you have to decide how much do you put in there, what is necessary. hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something too. Hopefully it kind of helped with your life a little bit because art can make life better. Last thing you want to do is sign this. A good place to sign it would be either down down here or maybe even right there across the front, just just above that. That might be a good place to sign it right there. And I hope you all have a lovely day.